All right, we're back. Uh, a regular. I don't know if he wants to remain anonymous. He's a regular. Uh, I like the clarity test on the Roman Emperor Aurelian. Uh, it's pretty obvious he didn't have a degree since those weren't a thing yet in the third century. He came from hum he came from humble beginnings as a farmer from what is now modern day Serbia. Oh, Serbia. I thought Siberia. I'm like he came all the way that far east. Uh, before joining the Roman Legion, he served under the previous emperor Claudius II. After Claudius's death, the legions declared Aurelian emperor. He would go on to defeat many. Is this the uh, the guy that uh, Gladiator was based off of? That guy. <clears throat> he would go on to defeat many German hordes uh, and restore the crumbling Roman Empire by destroying the upstart Palmyran and Gallic empires. For this, he was named Rest Restitutor Orbis, the restorer of the world. Before he could invade Persia, a corrupt scribe orchestrated his assassination as Aurelian was very famous at the time for being strict which at the time meant he gave severe punishments for infractions. Oh, I think, you know what? <clears throat> TFM, he, uh, Turflingy Monkey, you can find him on BitChute. He's talked about this guy before. If you want, here are some videos you can look for a little more detail on entertainment. Uh, well, let me just look up the basics of him. So uh, we already know he didn't come from wealth. He had real world working experience, both as a farmer and as a Roman centurion. Um, and yeah, I think, yeah, they worked till he's dead. I guess we don't. I think we kind of got it. He's got a perfect score. <clears throat> Emperor Aurelian. Kind of looks like a skinny guy. Um, was a Rome born September 214 to October 275. Was a Roman emperor from 270 to 75. Boy, they didn't last long. You want to talk, they, they, you didn't want to be king. Everyone was fighting to be king or emperor or whatever back in the olden times, and y'all didn't last long. Somebody was always trying to kill you. <clears throat> As emperor, he won an unprecedented series of military victories, which reunited the Roman Empire after it had practically disintegrated under the pressure of barbarian invasions and internal revolts. His successes were instrumental in ending the crisis of the third century, earning him the title Restitute or Orbis Restorer of the World. Born in humble circumstances, he rose to the military ranks to become emperor during his reign. He defeated the Alamanni, after a devastating war, he also defeated the Goths, Vandals, Juthungi, Samaritans, but they were good. Biblical humor. Uh, and Carpi, Aurelian restored the empire's eastern provinces after his conquest of the Palmyrian Empire. I got to look all these up. This is going to be something to study or listen to as podcast wise later on tonight. <clears throat> the following year, he conquered the Gallic Empire in the west, reuniting the empire in its entirety. He was also responsible for the construction of the Aurelian walls in Rome, the abandonment of the province of Dacia, and monetary reform. Although Domitian, two centuries previous, was the first Domitian, two previous centuries previous, was the first emperor who had demanded to be officially hailed as master and god. These titles never occurred in written form on official documents until the reign of Aurelian. Oh, all right. <clears throat> Um, early life. Not agree pays birch and naive hundreds. Born Remember all his Yeah, there's it's a lot of speculation. All right, and he went in the military around twenty. And then the rest is history. Um yeah, so let's go through. All right. Humble beginnings. Didn't come from a wealthy family. Uh, no stupid college degree. That's good. Served in the military, became emperor, died in five years. Uh, perfect score. Would I like to have a beer with him? Hell yeah. Should he have ran for office? Well, yes, he was nominated, but yes, today I would absolutely vote for him, but he'd be too much of a man for most men and women in America to handle. He'd like kick ass. We wouldn't want that. We want a touchy. You want Uncle Joe? Oh, huggable Joe. Oh, he's just so huggable, and he's nice, and he cares. And then you see when soft men lead. Oh, Kabul, anyone? Kabul went kaboom. Oh, no, it can't be possible, but he cared so much. They have a caring man in the office. We don't want a strong man. We want a nice man. He wears sunglasses. Did you see it? He's trying to be so cool. 
Uh, all right, a couple super chats here. Alex Patino, our truck driving Latino agent in the field, five bucks. Marcus Aurelius was the last of five. Oh, Marcus Aurelius. Yeah, wasn't he the guy that wrote the stoic books and everything? Was the last of the five great emperors and greatest stoic. Yes. Okay, now I know. Yeah. Uh, yeah, he wrote Meditations by Marcus Aurelius. Why did I put that together? Oh, Marcus Aurelius. This is Aurelian. Aurelian. Is this a different guy? Aurelian. This is a different guy. All right, so you had two kick-ass guys. Aurelian. Hang on. First name. Lucius Domitus Aurelianus. All right, that's not that's not um, Marcus Aurelius. Two separate guys there, Alex. Two separate guys. Nonstop Dre, <clears throat> two bucks. What's your favorite time period to learn about? Ah, uh, it changes. Because once you learn about it, then you're like, it's not new or novel. I guess like back in the olden days when, you know, Medal of Honor first came out, it was like World War II because you learned about all the different battles. But it's like, I don't need to hear the battle of, you know, Karatan. Uh, I don't know if I've ranked them. I'll tell you, then maybe all you guys can, can tune in. I really like Mesopotamian history because it's the first history. And it starts in Mesopotamia where <clears throat> you had, there were three. And there's like the city of Ur, like you get, we start recording history. Um, there's agriculture. Um, and the Assyrians weren't the first. It was the Mesopotamians that they were broken down into three general, and it came one after the other after the other. And you know, how they have to kind of repiece history to figure out, okay, this is what was going on, and they conquered this, and they conquered for that reason. Then you get to the Assyrians, still ancient, but they were they were badasses. And the Hittites, Canaanites, and all these other smaller, not as big superpower uh, tribes. The Egyptians, obviously, are in there as well, but I never really got too excited about Egypt, uh, e Egyptian history. Uh, but I like, like, the first, the Mesopotamian history. That would, that would be the first one I'd probably say. I really like the medieval era um, because there's a lot. And it somewhat gets repetitive because if you remove Germany, the Byzantium Empire, which I can't I can't do the Byzantium. It's just constant depression. They're they're always fighting on all sides and besieged from all sides. It's it was like uh, a thousand years of misery. Uh, but I really do like to see how uh, the the United, what was, what is now the United Kingdom, how that evolved, uh, all the kings and, and uh, the, the, uh, the Anglo-Saxons, then uh, the Battle of Hastings, what the French came in or so, I, it's a little fuzzy. Um, but how that, and then the Vikings were coming in and attacking and, and that. But then once you get, About 1,200, it's just France and Britain hating each other. The, let's pick a war with France again. Let's pick a war with Britain again. Maybe Spain gets in there. Sometimes they try to get Ireland and Scotland to help out. Uh, but then that got kind of repetitive, and British history is really repetitive. And like, oh, that guy tried to kill him. Oh, you usurped the throne. Oh, there was a regent. Oh, was... And we ran out of so many names, and now we're going to call him King James the Seventh. Oh, great. Hey, how about King Pookie? How about King Pookie? He'll go down in the books. There's only one of them. Um, then I liked... Uh, I don't like U.S. history. They shove that in my throat too much. I just don't go, oh, what about the Civil War? I couldn't care less. I just couldn't care about U.S. history. They, they made it boring. Um... <clears throat> I do like the, um, oh, what's it, what years would it be? Kind of 1700 up until World War I. That's an interesting th thing to see. The Austro-Hungarian Empire, Germany trying to be formed, France and, and England, and they all kind of the subterfuge. If you ever watch Sherlock Holmes, Game of Shadows, that kind of era. And then the technology that's coming along where they get cannon and, and artillery and uh, guns and rifling. Um, that's kind of interesting. I enjoy that. 
And then one of the best ones, it, it's unfortunately very short lived, would be the History of Mexico podcast. There may have been others made since under that name, but this guy did a great job. He started with uh, <clears throat> Cortez going and defeating the Aztecs. He did an amazing job. And I thought, well, that's a pretty cool story from what I knew. It's way more interesting than you thought it was. There was subterfuge and gold and, and mutiny and all this others. It was amazing what happened. Uh, and then he stopped. He, he didn't continue on. I'm like, well, what? Huh? What? No, there has to be more bloodshed. What? No. We... <laughs> uh, and then, yeah, that, that's, that's kind of what I do. And then... Um, Kings and Generals is real good. If they just they just do battles, I could fall asleep to that. <clears throat> Ancient Warfare History Podcast, those guys are really good. I like them. Um, and I like British accents because I fall asleep better. Um, but if I'm but you still glean a little bit. And then what's great is you fell asleep, so you don't remember it. So you could listen to it again. Great documentary series, though. <clears throat> um, not not history podcasts or anything like that. Wings of the Red Star. Oh man. All, they go over all the Soviet fighter planes and bombers and everything, and uh, it's really cool. And the guy who does the voice, uh, British guy, of course, he just has the best, and it's really interesting. So you can not only fall asleep, but if you're awake, you can pay attention and learn a lot of things. So I, that's a real cool one, even though not really a, a war or history documentary. Um... I also kind of like um, when diplomacy fails. He's a bit anal, but uh, when diplomacy fails, podcast that's pretty good. Mookie, two bucks. How does this help us get the girls? <clears throat> it doesn't. It doesn't. It will never help you get the girls. I already told you how to get the girls. Alex Patino, five bucks. Check out the YouTube channel, Kings and Generals. Yeah, uh, and also stay antiquity. And Middle Ages, they have good short videos and all pure. Oh, I, well, let's write that down. Antiquity and Middle Ages. <clears throat> I'll give me something to listen to tonight. Yeah, it's it's awesome, man. Like the stuff we can watch now on the internet, and not have to go to school, and you get to choose it. And here's the other thing, like. You have, like, it naturally, Kings and Generals has, like, 2 million subscribers because they're that good. Oh, Time Ghost History. Oh, yeah, that's a great one, too. Time Ghost History. You guys got to tune into that. That was in between World War I and World War II. It talks about technology and different countries and events and culture. And, they, and I'm not, I could, I have to double check. The guy does not edit. He is just a flawless, like, he doesn't screw up once. He goes through the whole thing. Like it doesn't, I was like, wow, that's, that's some performance. Um, <clears throat> that's a fun one. Like if you want to learn, oh, we went from rickety old biplanes to monoplanes and the, you know, BF 109s in that time. Talk about Hitler coming to power, <clears throat> um, all, all this other stuff that was going on. Really cool stuff. Um, but they're the best. These presenters are the best. And so now you have this handful of elite people providing the best quality superior presentations to educate people about history. And you don't have to rely on some idiot who couldn't muster more than a 2.0 in high school with a history degree. I'm sorry, an English degree with a specialization in history. I'm sorry, education degree with a specialization in history. Who doesn't really have a passion about history? Just go, hey, read these chapters and I'm going to regurgitate the chapters. The Battle of the Appomattox Courthouse, which I know is not a thing, but that's how I remember. The Battle of Antietam. Did a bunch of Northerners and Southerners die there too? They did? Okay. Never understood why we had to study the Civil War in such detail. I'm like, well, the North won, right? And we freed the slaves, right? Okay. Can we just say there was a Civil War and here are the leaders and, and, and here are the generals and, and uh, the South lost and Sherman's marched in and we burned down Atlanta? And can we just, and then the slaves were freed? No. All right, we caught up. I think we caught up with all the super chats. Boom, there you go. All right, let me. Oh, Dre. 
two bucks, but do they have a college degree in history? No, they probably not. And that's why I like about, <clears throat> I'm always against people getting degrees in history. You should be able to teach that in philosophy. Um, but that's why I love about the internet is like people are just good at it naturally. History degree or not are coming to the forefront. Like Molyneux, he doesn't have a philosophy degree. Number one philosophy podcast out there, even, even with big media against them. I mean, it's, it's just, you know, and I only have a minor in economics and I like to think I punch above my weight in terms of economics and presentation. All right, <clears throat> there you go. Uh, we'll see you guys later. Toodles.